absolute value of x minus 3. Now we could build a table of values. Uh, there's several different ways that we could do this, but let's go ahead and start uh, with the calculator so that I can remind everyone where the absolute value is. So go to your y equals, because that's where we want to type this in, because we kind of graph. Okay, absolute value. You can't just put parentheses around there and it consider it the absolute value bar. So calculator doesn't know that that's what you need. So absolute value, press math. It's right under the green alpha button. You go over to the uh, second category. It looks like num. It stands for number. The very first option there, ABS. It doesn't have the line or the bar, whatever you want to look at it as. Um, but ABS stands for the absolute value. <clears throat> we want to put X minus 3 inside parentheses because the minus 3 is inside the absolute value. If it were outside the absolute value, we would close the parentheses after the X. Um, we can look at the graph. Okay, it looks just like our graph from Friday, except it's shifted over three units. We could look at the table if we wanted to. We can... Um, Graph this however you want to after this point, but let's go ahead and plot some points here. Um, <clears throat> it goes through the y-axis at positive 3. And I'm just going to kind of graph the main center part of the function and then extend my lines from there. Okay, I could have, again, I could have gotten values from the table. But I kind of know a little bit about the absolute value function, so I'm just going off of that knowledge. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. It has the exact same shape, that V shape that we had, top floor, that we had from uh, yesterday, or from Friday. <clears throat> Except that, and we have the same slope. Slope of 1 on both sides, negative 1 on the left side, positive 1 on the right side. Um, Except the vertex, instead of being at the origin, is shifted right three units. We haven't really discussed that in this class, but that has to do with this minus three right here. Whenever you're adding or subtracting something inside of the function, it's going to move that, we call it the parent function, where we graphed on Friday, just the plain absolute value of x. It's going to move it that many units left or right, and it's the opposite of what we would expect. So a minus 3 moves us right 3. Minus, we would expect it to go left, but it goes the opposite when it's inside the function. Just kind of side note there. Okay, so is there something in the equation that tells us about the axis of symmetry? Okay, first of all, where is the axis of symmetry here on this one? Where, what vertical line could we draw in here that would cut our function in half? at x equals 3. Okay, this would cut it in half. x equals 3 right here would cut our function in half. Now, is there something in our equation that relates to that? Yeah, the 3. Okay, the 3 in the equation relates to that. So, it turns out that we can take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So in this case, what was inside of our absolute value was x minus 3. We set that equal to 0. So to solve for x, we're going to add 3 to both sides. So that's where the x equals positive 3 comes from. Okay, so if you remember from Friday, that told us that was our inequality part of our piecewise equation. So we'll get to putting it all together here in a second. But um, Okay, so let's see. Can we write the equation, a linear equation, to represent the left side of this function? So linear equation, we need the slope and we need the y-intercept. What is the slope of the left side of this function? Negative 1. What's the y-intercept? Three. Okay, so the equation for the left side of the graph is negative x 
plus 3. Now the right side's going to be a little bit trickier. The slope's the easy part. What's the slope of the right side? Positive 1. Can anybody kind of see what the y-intercept would be if it extended to cross the y-axis? Negative 3. Yep. X minus 3 is going to be our right side. So see how closely those are related to each other? Negative x plus 3 and positive x minus 3. It's like the signs are just opposite, okay? Um, that's going to be a characteristic of these functions here. So if we write this as a piecewise, we always do the left side first. Negative x plus 3 when x is less than... 3 this time, that comes from that axis of symmetry. And then the right side is x minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, I want you to make these as systematic as you possibly can. Find your inequality number, okay, where it changes, that axis of symmetry, and then um, we'll go from there, okay? So, Speaking of systematic, here are the steps. I have them there on your paper so you can look back at them as much as you need to. Step number one, set what's inside your absolute value equal to zero and solve for x. That's where the function changes. That goes with the inequality. Step number two, you're going to change all the signs inside the absolute value. You're going to drop your absolute value bars and you're going to combine like terms if applicable. Sometimes we'll have terms to combine, sometimes we won't. That's going to be your first equation, and that's always less than the number from step one. Okay. Step three, you're just going to drop the absolute value bars and combine like terms of applicable. That's your second equation. Its inequality is x is greater than or equal to the number from step one. Okay, so let's put some of these in action. We're going to write these as piecewise functions without worrying about graphing them first. We're just going to follow those steps for writing these as piecewise functions. So I'm going to take what's inside the absolute value, x minus 1. I'm going to set that equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Okay, so 1 is the number that's going to follow both inequalities. So if I'm going to write this as a piecewise function, the first piece, I'm going to change all the signs that were inside the absolute value. So negative x plus 1 when x is less than 1. For the second piece, I'm just going to drop the absolute value bars. I don't change anything. And that's when x is greater than or equal to 1. It really is that simple. Okay. Now on B, the only difference on B is that we have a constant in front. So we're going to have to do a little bit of simplifying. So first step remains the same. What's inside the absolute value bars equal to zero. We ignore the two for the time being. Subtract three from both sides. So X equals negative three is going to be the number with our inequality. Now, just so that I don't make my piecewise function look kind of nasty, I'm going to uh, do this to the side here. Two times, I'm changing my signs, negative x minus 3, and I'm going to distribute that 2. So it's negative 2x minus 6 is going to be my first piece. My second piece, I just drop the absolute value bars and I simplify, so I distribute the 2, 2x two plus 6. So our absolute value function, or excuse me, our piecewise function for the absolute value function is negative 2x minus 6, x is less than negative 3, positive 2x plus 6, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, C is kind of like B. We've got something outside of the absolute value, but this time instead of multiplying, 
it's being subtracted from the end. Okay, so step one still is the same. Okay, what's inside the absolute value equal to zero, solve for x. Add two to both sides, so x equals two. Bless you. Okay, I'm going to change the size of what's inside my absolute value, so negative x plus two. I don't change the sign of that minus one on the end because it's outside of the absolute value. And we're going to combine like terms. Two minus one is positive one. So that is our left side. Negative x plus one when x is less than two. The right side. Just drop the absolute value bars, x minus 2, minus 1, combine like terms. Negative 2 minus 1 is, I don't know why I put an equal sign, negative 3. So this is the first time that our pieces haven't been the exact opposite. Okay, this is the first time that our pieces have not looked uh exactly opposite. We actually have a different constant on the end and that's because this time we've got this minus one on the end that's going to behave differently than what we've seen so far. Okay, let's keep going. Let's look at example D. 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 1. First step, still the same. What's inside the absolute value? Set it equal to zero. Subtract one from both sides. X equals negative one. First, next step, change all the signs inside the absolute value. So it's three minus negative X minus one. Now, I put it in parentheses this time because it had that minus in front. So we've got to distribute that. 3 plus x plus 1 combine like terms x plus 4. So that one was had a little bit more going on than what we've seen so far. x plus 4 is our first piece when x is less than negative 1. Okay, second equation, just um, dropping the absolute value bars is not a good idea in this case because of the minus. Okay, but change them to parentheses, so it's 3 minus x minus 1. So that's negative x, 3 minus 1 is 2. So negative x plus 2 is that equation. Now let me show you what you can do to check these because I don't know about you, but this one seems like we did some stuff that we haven't done so far, so I'm a little worried about those negative signs and stuff. So let's check this. Here's what you need to do. Type in the original absolute value equation, 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 1. Okay, whoops. My let's see. There we go. 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 1. And then type in your equations as well. x plus 4 and negative x plus 2. And graph. Okay, there's the absolute value function. Okay, now. Did you see what happened after the absolute value? It was still graphing, and then all of a sudden it was like the left side of this function just extended itself. And then the right side of the, of the function kind of did it too. So it looks like we have two intersecting lines. That means that you wrote it as a piecewise function correctly, okay? As long as they completely overlap like that. So let's say maybe we made a mistake. Say that with that second one, we just dropped the absolute value bar, so we didn't get our parentheses here. So we did 3 minus x plus 1, so we had negative x plus 4. So this is not correct, but I'm going to show you 